Nearly a century ago, the miracle of public higher education was mainly a dream. The country had just concluded a tragic civil war, and its people were setting out to rebuild the crippled nation. One of the eloquent spokesmen of the dream of great universities open to all was John B. Bowman, first regent of the Agricultural and Mechanical College of Kentucky University. As Mr. Bowman said, I want to build a people's institution, a great free university, eventually open and accessible to the poorest boy in the land. I want it to run free as our great rivers and bless the coming millions. Indeed, we want everything which will make this institution eventually equal to any on this continent. Why should we not have them? I think we can. John Bowman made this statement in the year the University of Kentucky was established. The millions have come. The great university is a reality. And its influence touches the lives of people across the state, across the nation, and around the world. Room buildings, lecture halls, libraries, research centers, dormitories, new structures, their clean symmetry blending with the architecture of another era. Every fifty minutes, Classes change from math to political science, from history to English, to principles of economics to the lab. Students move continually from one discipline to another. Lectures, seminars, demonstrations, experiments. These are all part of your university, the University of Kentucky. The Marching 100 of the University of Kentucky. They look pretty much alike from a distance. But when you get to know them, they are as different from one another as their work in life will be. Some will be doctors, some lawyers, others teachers, engineers, scientists, writers. Yes, each is different from the other. But when brought together at the university, each one profits by that difference. Here, the students have the chance to work and study with those of different interest. By doing so, they learn not only in the classroom, but also from each other. University graduates and the education they receive represent the school's greatest contribution to the people of Kentucky. Take a graduating class at the University of Kentucky. Among them, perhaps, is a young person your community badly needs. Over a thousand graduates leave the University of Kentucky every year. A diploma alone does not gauge capacity. The young graduate is now prepared to grow and prove his worth to his community. The potential for growth and service is there, for behind every graduate is the University of Kentucky's reputation for quality education and increasing service to the people of Kentucky. Great universities have always contributed to the advancement of mankind. The University of Kentucky, since its beginning, has devoted its time and facilities, and most important of all, the minds of men to teaching and research. University scientists knew of the power of the atom long before it was drafted into warfare. You may never have heard of nuclear engineering, but it is being taught here at the University of Kentucky one of the relatively few places in the entire world where such training is available. Engineers trained here may soon be testing your roads for thickness or flaws with radioactive devices unknown a few years ago. It is here that young engineers learn to use the vast power of the atom, not for destruction, but to improve the economy for Kentucky. It is the soil that sustains us, our food, 
our clothing, even the material to make our houses comes from the soil. Kentucky soils her farmers, her crops, and livestock. These are the concern of people here in one of the better agricultural experiment stations in the nation, one that devotes its efforts to studies that will benefit Kentucky's farmers. From here has come research that has been tobacco growers. Every year, Kentucky's burley growers receive $80 million more for their crop than they would have made without research carried on by the university. Kentucky's livestock has been improved. Its quality is better, its production higher, because of work constantly going on in this field at the university. From all over Kentucky, young farmers come to the university to study, to benefit from the knowledge of experts on the university staff. The university's agricultural experiment station finds new ways to make work easier for the farm family and make the land pay greater dividends. The Agricultural Extension Service, by means of its core of county agents, carries these findings into every part of the state. In a recent year, a quarter of a million Kentucky farm families made some change in their homemaking practices because of help from home demonstration agents. And the health of Kentucky citizens is also of direct concern to your state university. A new medical center is in operation to train more doctors, nurses, dentists, technicians to prevent these suffering. Equipment and specialists will be available for the care of unusual cases that otherwise might have to leave the state. And the University of Kentucky wants to provide the young people of the state with the quality education necessary for this changing age. And our state needs well-trained youth. Many ambitious young people who cannot leave home or jobs no longer need be deprived of a university education. A way has been found to serve them through off-campus centers. Centers like this one in Covington are bringing higher education to the student in his own home area. Similar centers, all with regular University of Kentucky instructors, are operating in Ashland, Cumberland, the Fort Knox Elizabethtown area, and Henderson. These centers are serving older students too. Many whose education was interrupted are in college again because of the centers. And Kentucky's adult citizens are aware that college training is essential to many occupations, and they're seeking that training by attending adult extension classes. These classes are held at the university campus at the centers and at various other meeting places throughout the state. Leaders from Kentucky and across the nation, from business, from agriculture, from other fields, come to the campus as students too. Many meetings dealing with a variety of subjects are held on the campus. An expert from a number of fields Many of them staff members of the university make valuable contributions to the groups seeking their service. The university, in short, is a world of inspiration and knowledge. Here in the quiet, unhurried atmosphere of the library are unlimited sources of information. New scientific findings or the thoughts of the ancients are available here for those who seek them. Art and music from the masters of yesterday and today are part of university life. A few years ago, this great body of water was a meandering stream, going its own way, fed by its tributaries. And those same tributaries are feeding Kentucky Lake today, but our people are receiving vastly more benefit from them since they were brought together to meet certain needs, navigation, and flood control, at the same time providing power for home and industry. And the University of Kentucky also is a place fed from many sources and serving many purposes. Each of its 10 colleges, of its 150 departments, of its many and varied services is a tributary. Each continues to serve in its own right, but also unites with the others to give something more 
to make those additional contributions in research and public service, which are the marks of a great university, Kentucky's University. President of the University of Kentucky, Dr. Frank G. Dickey, who will present some of the needs and services of your state university. During the next several years, the University of Kentucky, like most institutions of higher education, is going to experience the most rapid growth in its entire history. A considerable amount of time and thought has gone into planning what the university should be, let us say, five years or ten years from now. In this planning, it has become increasingly clear that the university is only a means to an end, namely that of improving opportunities and services for the people of this state and this region. We are dedicated to the task of increasing the stature of our state university. But if we are to accomplish this task, we shall need increased support for both ongoing and new programs. The budget request of the university for the coming biennium has been presented. We are requesting just that amount of money which we feel is necessary to carry out the mission of this institution. The size, the statewide responsibility, the complex nature, and the character of the comprehensive land-grant state university can be presented in a few brief statements. First, in many professional programs, pharmacy, medicine, dentistry, engineering, architecture, law, microbiology, and others, the University of Kentucky has the only state-assisted programs in the Commonwealth. Second, in the field of graduate study, the University of Kentucky is the only institution of state-assisted character which offers any graduate degrees in fields other than education. It is also the only state-assisted institution offering any degrees at the doctoral level. A third factor is that the enrollment of full-time students at the University of Kentucky is more than double that of the nearest institution in size. Fourth, the research activities of the university are of such importance to the economy of the state that additional support is deserved and required. Finally, the service activities of the university through its various bureaus and through its extension programs require support not connected with other institutions. It is against this background that the budget request must be assessed. It is the largest in the history of the university, partly because the task to be performed is the largest, and partly because this task must be executed at a time when costs in all categories stand at record levels. This is not the moment in the history of the Commonwealth of Kentucky for ignorance to be permitted to exist anywhere. A bold approach, such as the budget request which is presented, is needed if the University of Kentucky is to play its rightful role in the destiny of the state and the nation. 